We're back and we're going to do a second lecture now specifically on the ideas of shape and geometry of molecules. And what am I talking about shapes of molecules? So what we're really interested in here and through to the end of the chapter is ideas around um, how atoms put other atoms that are attached to it, that are bound to it, around themselves. And, and we're going to kind of make an assumption here, a false one, but we're going to kind of to refer to all these molecules as if they're covalent. So I'm about to show you magnesium or calcium um, making covalent bonds, which we know it doesn't do. But for the purposes of the rest of this chapter, we're going to talk about all of these atoms as if they all share electrons, and you'll see what I mean. Um, and because we can only really talk about this as if we make that kind of cheaty assumption, it is, it's okay, we can get away with it really here. Uh, we can kind of, we can predict shape and geometry based on this slightly uh, simplified view of the world or false view of the world. Um, so, what are we talking about? Well, there's this um, elegant term, which is valence shell electron pair repulsion. Um, and it's V-E-S-P-R, and if you type that into YouTube, you'd find all kinds of videos on valence shell electron pair repulsion, but tease that apart. What, they're, what we're gonna talk about is how valence shell electrons, remember, valence, outer shell, so carbon has four, nitrogen has five, oxygen has six, fluorine has seven, outer shell electrons, valence shell, when they make an electron pair, so when they make a covalent bond. So valence shell electron pairs repulse each other. It's a fancy VESPR, fancy way of saying, well, electrons are all repulsive. The two electrons make a covalent bond, all right, that's important. Two electrons make a covalent bond, and when they do, they are repelled from all the other bonds. So, we're gonna to try to get them as far apart as possible, right? So if you're the central atom, and you have two things around you, what's the first part you can put them? Straight line. If you have three things apart around you, what's the furthest away you can put them? Well, at 120 degrees, right? Three parts of a, tri a circle, a perfect triangle. If you have four, well, it gets more complicated at four, but we'll talk about that in order. So remember, certain assumption here that everything's covalent because uh, it only works as a discussion in that context. So what I want you to know is this is important, which is that this is not trivial. It's not easy. You shouldn't be intimidated or disappointed or frustrated that you find it hard. It is hard and it's got a lot of memorization, um, but hopefully you'll get the big idea, the idea of it and so once you get your head around the idea, it starts to become a logic puzzle instead of just memorizing a boatload of stuff. If you're memorizing stuff without understanding it, come back and watch this again. So we're gonna to try to get the electrons as far apart as possible. And it's really about groups. Remember, guys and groups have similar properties. If you're in group two, if you're magnesium or calcium or strontium or all those guys, um, you have similar properties because you have two outer shell electrons, right? So um, let's say you're magnesium or calcium, but we'll say magnesium, and you are making two bonds with two chlorines, and you're make, making magnesium chloride, MgCl2. Now, we know it's ionic, but let's, let's talk about it in terms of, let's pretend it's covalent for the moment, and I apologize that I, in the last video, talked about how it's ionic, ionic and now I'm talking about it as if it's co covalent it's it's a lie cheat that gets us somewhere so you're magnesium and you have two calciums attached to you how how would you get these two calciums one in my one hand one in my other hand how would you get them as far apart as possible well you'd stretch them out right you put them at 180 degrees and that's what magnesium does so there's a couple of things I want you to know about magnesium once you know that. So what you're going to need to know for any of these central atoms that have things attached, um, first of all, geometry and shape only mean anything 
if there's th two or more things around that central atom. I mean, if it's just sodium chloride, it's NaCl, NaCl, there's no shape to that, it's just two atoms sitting next to each other. But once you have a magnesium, you have to put two chlorines around it, or chlorides in this case. How do you arrange them? Well, here's the three things you need to know about any of these. First of all, I'm going to want you to know, and I'm sorry about the shadows, um, that it's magnesium chloride, that it's, gosh, um, sorry, let's see if I can do this. Well, I guess I can't. You're going to have to read it backwards. So, magnesium and chloride, magnesium, two chlorines, they're CLs, but you have to see it backwards. The furthest apart you can put them is 180 degrees. So, a couple of things you're going to have to do. You're going to have to know what its geometry is, right? Well, how does it arrange itself in three-dimensional space? Well, it's a line, so we call it linear. You need to know that, linear. And of course, if it's a linear, it's 180 degrees. Apologies for it being backwards on this video if it is. Um, and then the other thing to know is that this is called the geometry. It's the geometry of the molecule. Well, it's also the shape. The shape of the atom the, of the molecule is based on the geometry. So geometry and shape here are the same, which won't always be true. There will be um, molecules coming up, chemically bound, covalently bound molecules, in which the geometry and shape of the molecule aren't the same, but only the last two I do. So, um, what's the next one? Well, the next one I want you to know about is group three, of course, boron or aluminum, those kind of atoms. They have three outer shell electrons. So they can uh, make three bonds. They would make three bonds. They'd make three bonds, sorry, I'm fooling around here, make three bonds with three different things. Let's do aluminum again. So if you have three, uh, sorry, three uh, chlorines again. So if you have three chlorines around you, your aluminum, how do you get them furthest apart as possible? Well, you put two sort of down here, one up, right? You'd have them in a plane, a piece of paper, and that piece of paper would have three things on it. So it would sort of be a circle cut in three pieces. 120 degrees, right? 360 divided by three, 120 each, right? And that's what aluminum and boron and group three atoms do. And assuming we have, um, you know, covalent bound aluminum. So here's aluminum. You can see the Lewis dots for the three electrons of aluminum. And here's your three chlorines. And this is aluminum chloride, but we're pretending it's covalent. What's its geometry is your first question. Well, notice three atoms as far apart as possible. They're at 120 degrees. Not only that, they're in the same plane. Literally speaking, these three chlorines are in the plane of the board, as is aluminum, right? Because if one of these chlorines came out towards you, it would actually get closer to the other two chlorines and it would snap back into the plane of the board. So the first thing you ask yourself is, how do I describe this geometry? Well, it's a triangle. One, two, three. It's a triangle, and it's in the plane of the board. So as long as you say that it's triangular and planar, or you say triangle, plane, or you say planar triangle, or triangle and plane, any way you can say that, I'll be thrilled. But you will be asked this, you know, you'll be asked, how do you describe the geometry of aluminum or boron? Well, you'd say it's planar and triangular, or trigonal planar, or whatever. And I'll ask for the bond angles, 120 degrees. Hopefully that's logical, right? You're breaking this circle up in three parts. 360 divided by three, 120. And again, geometry and shape are the same idea. 
backwards, though it is. Geometry and shape mean the same thing. So just like the last one, geometry and shape are the same thing. So if I ask you for the shape of the molecule of aluminum chloride, or if I ask you for the geometry of aluminum chloride, you'd say it's a planar triangular shape, it's a planar triangular geometry, it's 120 degrees, and that's really the whole thing. Now, you and I care about carbon. Carbon is the most fascinating molecule. We saw methane before. Remember I did in the last video, and in class we did methane, CH4, and we drew it as a Lewis dot structure. We drew it with bonds. I'm gonna do it again, because it's worth doing again. Um, we drew it with bonds, meaning we drew a line that indicated two electrons. Remember, each line represents two electrons. I'm doing it in here, right? And these are two electrons. Those are two electrons, and that's two electrons, and that's two electrons. That's methane. But we can imagine, we know that, it's weird watching yourself on video, uh, we can imagine that this is not the geometry, that's not the three-dimensional arrangement of methane, because it's illogical to think that you would put four things at 90 degrees, right? See how you break a square up in four pieces? It's uh, 90 degrees, 90 degrees. I can get them further apart if I put them in three-dimensional space. And that is true. Um, you may or may not have heard this in a high school geometry class, but what you can do with four things is you can push them into three-dimensional shape. And here it is, here's methane. This is a molecule of methane. The black sphere is uh, carbon. These are four hydrogens. I'm going to hold one. And you can see that no matter how I turn it, it's symmetric, right? You don't know which carbon, which hydrogen I started with. They're all the same. And you can see that it's not, you know, it's not 90 degrees. It's more than 90 degrees. Look at that angle. Oh, there you go. Look, it's more than 90, more than 90, right? This one is more than 90, right? It, they're greater than 90 degrees, and that's because when you push it into three-dimensional space, this valence shell electron pair repulsion can push them further apart. So that's what we have here. We have a molecule that has four things coming off it, and so the geometry here is a tetrahedron, tetra meaning four, a geometric shape, a geometric entity called a tetrahedron, and here it is. And notice that each line here, each bond, it represents two electrons. This is the same as that image back on the board that you just saw. It's a tetrahedron in three dimensions. And again, the shape of this molecule is a tetrahedron, as is the geometry. Now, here's what I need you to know. For a molecule like this, the bond angles are greater than 90 they're in fact almost 110. They're 109 and a half. And uh, I'd like you to know that number. I'm afraid I'm gonna ask you at some point, what's the bond angles in carbon, in methane? And you're gonna say 109.5. I'm afraid I'm gonna ask that. So um, there's the tetrahedron of methane or, or, uh, or carbon, really, group four. Silicon would do this, it's in group four. Group four tetrahedron. Now, it gets more interesting when you were nitrogen. Remember, we had that image last uh, video of nitrogen, and in class we did this. It has three bonds and a lone pair. We drew it in two dimensions. We drew it on the board, right? We're gonna do it again here. We're gonna draw, I'm gonna draw nitrogen. It has five outer shell electrons. And it's gonna make a bond with three hydrogens. And it looks very much like our methane here, right? Only the difference is that the nitrogen has a lone pair of electrons, but it's still got four things coming off it. Well, if it has four things coming off it, and remember that image, maybe stop it and stare at it for a second. You'll see it in the textbook as well, and as well as on the PowerPoints available to you. 
But here's what you know, that really, if you have four things coming off you, carbon does, carbon, um, nitrogen does, Nitro imagine this is a nitrogen, um, nitrogen has four things coming off it, only one of them is a pair of electrons with nothing bound to it. There, now all of a sudden it's not like you don't know which hydrogen I'm holding, it's not symmetric. It's got this lone pair here, right? Two electrons. And so, one thing you notice, because remember, in each case, I'm gonna want you to know the geometry and the bond angles. One thing you notice is that the geometry for nitrogen, like in ammonia, or for uh, phosphorus, right below it, one thing you're gonna notice is that the geometry is still tetrahedron. It's a tetrahedron, it still is, right? I mean, all I did was pop a hydrogen off. And so the bond angles, well, in truth, because these electrons are alone, they, these atoms get a little closer to each other, but for our purposes, we're gonna say that the bond angles are still tetrahedron, 109.5. Why not say that? It's secretly 107, but if you say 109.5, I'm, I'm happy with that. Um, so, here it is, the geometry, the geometry is still 109.5, but, and uh, the geometry is a tetrahedron at 109.5, but if someone were to get out a atomic kit, like I am playing with here, and get the sphere that is nitrogen, nitrogen has three holes in it for three hydrogens. This is nitrogen in my kit, and I'm pretending I, this carbon's a nitrogen. These are the same. In other words, here's uh, ammonia, NH3, with a lone pair. That's the geometry. It's a tetrahedron, right? It's still a tetrahedron, it's just one's a lone pair. Still 109.5, but when you look at the shape of the molecule, which, you know, there's a lone pair sticking up here but that lone pair is not part of the molecule. It's just a lone pair, it's electrons. Now I'm talking about NH3. What's the shape of this molecule? Here's ammonia. How would you describe this? Well, it's a triangular shape, but it's not flat like aluminum, right? It's not 120 degrees, it's 109.5 because they're closer to each other. And so it's a pyramid. Look, it's a pyramid. I don't know how to indicate it. It's a pyramid. It's a, it's a three-sided pyramid. So here's the tricky part of this discussion. Aluminum or boron or those guys, what am I talking about? Gallium in group three. They have three th electrons, so they put them 120 degrees. It's a planar and triangular geometry, a planar and triangular shape. However, Watch this video twice, because here's the important point. For nitrogen, the geometry is tetrahedron. Ah, nitrogen, NH3, right? But the shape of the molecule is not tetrahedron. The shape is now different because of the lone pair. The shape of the atoms is a triangular pyramid. Not a triangular planar shape, but a triangular pyramid shape. Okay, so triangular pyramid shape, tetrahedral geometry, and so 109.5. One more to go. One more is oxygen, and we care about this obviously a lot um, because there's water. Red is famously in your molecular models kit. Red is water. Oxygen makes two bonds and has two lone pairs. We talked about that in the last video. Two bonds, two lone pairs. So there's the atom making bonds. We already can see that it's got a weird shape, right? And here's the video, here's the, um, the drawing we did uh, last video. We said oxygen, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. It's in group six. If you're not sure, check the periodic table, which means that it can make two bonds to hydrogen and have these two lone pairs. Now, what's weird about this? Well, first of all, one, two, three, four, four things coming off it. 
Four things coming off it. Four things coming off it. Right? So, what does that mean for water? Well, that's why water is shaped like it is. Right? So its shape is this weird thing, right? Because once again, like ammonia, you have to think of it in three dimensions. Let's talk about the geometry. So here's uh, methane would have a hydrogen on here, CH4. Uh, nitrogen, you pluck one hydrogen off because you have a lone pair. So you have NH3, bang, H2O. Pluck off another hydrogen, pretend this is oxygen in the middle. And now you see the geometry of water. It's H2O, right? So there's H2O. In fact, um, I've got these two molecules, right? They're both pretending to be H2O. Now, this tells you about why that other one is that, that bent or angular shape. And that's because it's still a bloody tetrahedron. Look, it's still, I'm still using the carbon kit, right? So it's still got the geometry of a tetrahedron. It does, it's a tetrahedral geometry. However, its shape is different now. Look, its shape is just the atoms that are making bonds. And this is probably something you've seen before, right? The sort of Mickey Mouse alien antennas thing that's water floating around, really got this strange geometry and shape. But it's got that shape because of this geometry. So. What do you need to know about oxygen or sulfur? You need to know tetrahedral geometry, just like nitrogen, just like carbon. But shape is different. For carbon, the shape is still tetrahedron. Geometry and shape are the same. For nitrogen, it's trigonal pyramid. For oxygen, like in water or H2S, Look at the shape, it's what's called a bent or angular shape, All right? So I'm gonna do, I've got up here a quick uh, summary of this um, so that if you get this far in the video and congratulations if you did, I've got all of them again. So here's, here's magnesium, remember? Geometry equals shape because there's no lone pairs. Linear, 180 degrees. Now, group three. Because it's got no lone pairs, geometry and shape are the same. It's a planar and triangular geometry and shape. It's at 120 degrees. For carbon, look at my three-dimensional drawing. It's a tetrahedron, which makes it 109.5 degrees. And again, geometry and shape are the same because it's got no lone pairs. Here, look. Now... I've got the same, notice I'm doing the same drawings with a little hash and dots going back. There's the wedge coming forward, the dots going back. But now because of one lone pair, geometry and shape are different. The geometry is still a tetrahedron, so it's still 109.5, but the shape is a trigonal pyramid. You can see that trigonal pyramid. You can see the shape of that mo molecule. And then water, or, well, it's always going to be water when I ask. Notice, again, I'm doing that, I'm doing that ha uh, wedge coming towards you and dash is going back. It's still a tetrahedron. One, two, three, four things coming off it. So the geometry is still a tetrahedron, so 109.5. But the shape is bent or angular. If you say bent or angular, I'm, I'm very happy in either case. Right, but you have to answer that for shape, not ge uh, geometry. The geometry of group six, group five, and group four are all geometry tetrahedron. Four things coming off. Now, one caveat right at the end, which is this is about the number of things coming off a central atom. And what you see is true. So, for instance, notice this molecule. This is a carbon, because it's bl the black sphere, making two bonds to another carbon. And because of that, it's like, look, it's a line. It's a linear molecule. So for this carbon, even though I just told you, I just told you carbon is tetrahedron, but in this case, notice, because it's making two bonds, I can see that it's linear. 
or it's planar and triangular, 120 degrees, right? So you'll see this in a couple of slides when you look forward. Um, you'll see a, a, a version with SO2 in which it has two lone pair, uh, two double bonds to two oxygens and a lone pair up, right? So there, in that case, we, what do you see? You see its geometry is planar and triangular, but its shape is bent, SO2, right? There's one that's two H's with a C double bond O sticking up in the middle. There, in that case, on that slide, when you look at this slide on PowerPoint, it's the upper left. Uh, it's geometry. You look at it and you say three things. Well, three things coming off the central atoms like aluminum. Um, so that's planar and triangular or trigonal planar, whatever, 120 degrees. And there's no lone pair, so the shape and geometry are the same. And then at the bottom is the C double bond O. And you can see for both carbons, the geometry and the shape are planar and triangular. Here's that molecule. This is the molecule on the PowerPoint slide that you could go look at. Please go look at it. Um, so, you know, it's, it's not just those examples. So, video two, uh, mole molecular shape, um, electronic geometry. Um, I hope it's been useful. You may want to watch this 27 minutes of video two or three times to get your head around it. I'm going to ask lots of questions on it. It always is a problem for people, especially this year, that we don't have me standing in front of you uh, able to answer questions. So, um, and, and by the way, if you have any questions, I hope you email them um, and I'll try to answer them during break or whenever I can. I'll be on holiday too, I'm going off. So um, anyway, I hope this is useful. It has to be, you have to learn this, you have to do your homework. All right, thanks for your time. Next up, video three, polar bonds, polar molecules, and we'll finish the chapter talking about three intermolecular forces. Hold on for that.